Measure-driven data labels. So labels where you can say what needs to show on the label using a measure. Now, this can be super helpful. For example, if you only want to show a label for the maximum and the minimum point, or maybe you want to show a completely different value, for example, the year-over-year -year percentage change. Now, that is where measure-driven data labels come in place. Now, people have been asking for it since 2019, and here we are, three years later, and still nothing. So we either keep on waiting, or we are going to use the solution that I'm going to show you in this video. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Buzz, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look how we can get more control over our labels. Now the example that we're going to rebuild is this one over here, where we can switch between different values that we show on the labels. For example, maybe we only want to show the value for the maximum and minimum, or the year over year percentage change. As a starting point, I have the line chart without the labels. So let's start by adding the labels to it. So I go over here to format. Then we have data labels over here. I'm going to turn it on. And there you go, we have our labels. However, the values that we show on the labels are always corresponding to the field that we have over here on values. So in our case, sales actuals. And now I'm looking for the option to change those values. However, here under the data label section, there's nothing. Okay, also, if I go here to values, there's no FX button for the values that I'm showing. So what now? Now what we can do is make use of calculation groups, where we can use a calculation to set the formatting. And this will also enable us to completely change the values that we show on the labels. Now the downside of this approach is that we need an external tool like Table Editor to create those calculation groups. However, once you have a tool like Table Editor, then you can go there and create the calculation group. So in Tabular Editor, you can just go here to Tables, right-click, Create New, Calculation Group. Then give it a name. Now, here in this calculation group, we're going to have calculation items that determine, well, the label values. So I'm going to call this one Data Labels. And then we can add calculation items to that calculation group. And you need one for each value option that you want to have for the labels. Now, let's start off with the year-over-year -year percentage change. Now, what are calculation items? These are just calculations that you can apply on top of your measures. Now here, we don't want to change the actual values of the measures. So to return the value of the measure to which you apply the calculation item, you just say selected measure. Now where it gets interesting is over here where we can switch to the format string expression. Now custom formatting string normally looks something like this. So it goes in between quotation marks and then 0.0, .0 let's say percent. And this would then show uh, the number as a percentage with one decimal. However, here we can make this a little bit more complex and build a whole formula that says what formatting string needs to be applied when. Now in our case, we do not just want to say how the value should be formatted. We want to return a completely different number, the sales year over year percentage change. So that's the tricky part. Now let's get rid of that custom formatting string and create a variable where we say the sales uh, year over year percentage. And this is going to be equal to, well, I already created a measure over here that calculates the year over year percentage change. So we can refer to that one over there. Now, if I would say now, okay, return and then sales year over year percentage, this wouldn't work because as you can see over here, format string expression, invalid format string definition, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it needs to be of the type string. So it needs to be text. All right, now, anyways, I need over here a format function because I need to say, okay, how should that value be formatted? So therefore, we have to use that format function. And then I could say over here what the custom formatting string is. So 0.0% could do something like this, or maybe uh, without any decimals like this. Now, if we save it and go back to Power BI, and over here, we have to click on refresh now. And you see here on the right hand side, there we have now data labels. And there we have the name column, which is a column that contains that calculation item year over year percentage. Now, if you want to, you can also rename that. So if you go back and you see there's that name of the name column, we could, for example, call this one data label values. And you see it nicely updates. So what can we do with it? Well, to make sure that the formatting string expression gets applied to 
well, the labels for our sales line, we need to go here to our calculation group and then drag it over here onto the filter section for that visual. Now from here, we can just select the calculation item, year over year percentage, and there you go, we have our percentages. However, the values look a little bit off, especially there for August, you see a very large value. And over here we have two minus signs for March. Hmm. What is going on? Well, let's go back to our formatting expression. So here in Tabular Editor, there is our calculation item. Here we go to the formatting string expression, and here we have to make a change. So what is going on and why do we sometimes see these weird values? Well, we return here a percentage value and Power BI interprets that as the formatting string. However, sometimes that doesn't really work out very well. So how can we make sure that the values that show on our labels are correct? Well, it's quite easy. You just have to go here in front of the format function and there we need to combine it with a custom formatting string, which is empty. So quotation mark, quotation mark, which we then wrap again in quotation mark, quotation mark. All right, so four of them. And then we combine that with the format function. All right, and that's it. If we now save it and go back to Power BI, you see this looks much better and we have the correct values. However, here on the Y axis, hmm, something is still off. Now, how can we make sure that, well, we don't have over here also percentages, but the actual absolute values of the actual sales? Well, let's go back again to our formatting string expression. And here we can add another variable. So let's go here to the next line and then call this one format string. Now here we just need an if statement and we need to say, okay, if, and then is selected measure. And here we can refer to sales actuals. And if it is sales actuals, then we want to have, well, the sales year over year percentage. And otherwise we want to have nothing. And then close the if statement. Now, instead of putting here these four quotation marks, I would usually put them over here at the beginning. All right. And then what we want to return is that formatting string. Now, if we click here on save and go back, hmm, didn't solve the problem. Well, because we only have one measure, which is the sales actuals, that is measured here on the Y axis. So this didn't fix it. However, it's part of the solution because now we can add another measure and this is going to be a dummy measure. So we can just call it dummy and then set it equal to one. And now I'm going to take that measure and put it above sales actuals. Now it's important that this is the first one. And over here you see that the Y axis looks good again with the normal values. Now, of course you don't want to show that dummy line. So you go here to format and then lines. And over here we can customize our series. So I'm going to select dummy and then put the stroke width to zero so that it doesn't show. And the same for the markers. Now the markers are still there. So let's open up the markers, formatting options, customize the series is on. And over here for dummy, I'm going to hide the markers. All right, so the labels are still there. So I have to go over here to the data labels as well and select the dummy and then deselect show data labels. All right, so now we have the right values on our data labels. We have no problem with the Y axis anymore. And now we can fully customize the labels in any way we like. So for example, we could still show the absolute values as well right next to it. If we go back to our formatting string expression in Tabular Editor, we could create over here at the beginning another variable for the absolute values. So we could say something like sales actuals is going to be equal to, and then also here you need that format uh, function referred to the sales actuals measure, just drag it in there. And then over here as the formatting string, you can do something that's, uh, like this. Let's say we want to show it in thousands. And then we create another variable in which we are going to combine the two. So over here, let's say var, and this is going to be the label value. And here we want to combine the two. So I can just refer to sales actuals and combine that with the sales year over year percentage. And then in between, we can do quotation mark, quotation mark, and then choose the sign that we want to have in between. So maybe something like this. And then here for the if statement, we just need to put the label value. All right, now let's save it again. I see now we have the absolute values 
as well as the year over year percentages. So what if we wanna take that one step further and create a toggle that lets us switch between different values that we show on the labels. For example, I wanna sometimes show the year over year percentage change like here, sometimes the absolute values, and sometimes just the maximum and minimum. Now to show a label only for the maximum and minimum, well, you need a measure that calculates the maximum minimum now that I've already done. Now that is not the main focus for this video. So just to quickly walk you through it, over here, I calculate the overall maximum at the month level. Here, I do the same, but then for the minimum. And then here in the end, I only return the max the sales actuals when it's equal to that maximum or minimum. That's it. All right. Now that measure I can use also later on in Tabular Editor for the formatting string expression. So I go back here to Tabular Editor. I create another calculation item. So over here, right click, create new calculation item. And let's call this one max min. Now also here, we just want to return the value of the measure that we apply the calculation item to. We don't want to change the measure value. All right, now where it gets interesting is the formatting string expression. So let's go there. So here we can do something similar as we did before. So we can create a variable and let's call this one show value. So which value should show. And then we can use an if statement. So if, and then sales actuals. And if sales actuals is equal to either the maximum or the minimum, now also there we have already a measure created, then we want to return well, the value for sales actuals. And otherwise, we want to return nothing. So quotation mark, quotation mark. Close the if function. Okay, so now that we have the values that we want to show, we can create another variable. So I go here to the next line. And that is going to be the formatting string. So formatting string. And for the formatting string, we only want to apply it to, well, in our case, the measure sales actuals. So I need an if function and check if the selected measure is sales actuals. So is selected measure. I drag sales actual over here into the function, close the function. And now we need to format that variable, show value, as so the sales actuals when it's equal to the maximum minimum. So we can do that with a format function. So over here, format, show value, then the formatting that you want. So over here, we can go for something like this. And if it's not the sales actual measure and there's another measure in our visual, then we want to show what well, the normal Power BI formatting that is set up over there. So we can use the selected measure format string function, just like this. All right, let's close the F function and then return the formatting string. All right, so that is the formula. Now we can just clean it up a little bit, just like this. And of course, instead of calling it new calculation, let's come up with something better. For example, max min. Now let's then also have an option to just show the normal absolute values. So that's going to be my last calculation item, absolute. And also here, we want to return the selected measure. So the expression over here is not going to change the values format string expression, well, we can just leave it empty. So this is all good. Let's save it and return to Power BI. And you see in the filter section, we have now three calculation items, but I don't want to have them in the filter section anymore. I want to have them on a slicer. So I'm going to remove it from here. All right, and then we are going to build a new visual, a slicer visual, and I'm going to drag it in the top right corner of my visual, of the other one, and then here, I take the calculation group, drag it onto the slicer, and then resize the slicer a little bit so that it nicely fits. And now I'm going to click on one of the calculation items. For example, year over year percentage change. There you go. Absolute values, perfect. And then the max min. Oh, something is still off. You see, it changes the values for the maximum and minimum. However, the other ones are still visible. So that we still need to fix. So let's go back to Tabular Editor and choose the max min calculation item and switch again to the formatting string expression. And I already see what I forgot. And that is over here, the four quotation marks in front of the format function. And now I hope it works. Let's cross the fingers, let's go back. And now it's working. We have only the data label showing for the maximum minimum. And we have a nice toggle to switch to whatever we wanna see on the labels. So this is how to set up measure driven data labels in Power BI. Now, of course, I also hope that soon we don't need calculation groups anymore to get this to work. However, until that time, this is the way to do it. Now, if you want to see more examples of how you potentially could use it, then check out these videos over here. 
if you have any questions, just post them in the comment section below. And I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next video.